It's hard to say what's more popular, hot dogs or the delectable breed they resemble, the adorable Dachshund. Even casual dog watchers can readily spot and smile at the short and sweet Dachshund. With their sausage-shaped bodies, short legs, proud Roman heads, velvet ears, and soulful almond-shaped eyes, these cuddly hounds are famous for giving their owners the look and melting their hearts. Dachshund lovers will take the Doxies over hot dogs every time. However, like many sweet confections, there's a much more complex history behind the infectious flavor of this notable breed. Recognized by the AKC in 1885, the Dachshund is one of the AKC's six original breeds, though the dog's precise origins are unknown. One of the Dachshund's great mysteries is how a dog called a hound can have the instincts of a terrier. Some believe that the breed evolved from Basset Hounds in Germany, where they were mixed with terriers. Others think that Dachshunds are all terrier, derived from Dandy Dinmonts. The Doxy is the single member of the AKC's hound group that hunts like a terrier, making it the only non-terrier breed eligible to compete in AKC Earth Dog trials. But Dachshund lovers feel these special dogs are beyond classification, often saying the Dachshund is a hound that became a terrier that displays the best qualities of both. The breed standard was developed in Germany in 1879. The German name for the breed, Dachshund, explains the dog's skill as a hunter, with Dach translating as badger and Hund to dog. Everyone looks at the Dachshund and says, isn't that cute? But a nice lap dog, well, it's not cute and it's not a lap dog. It's a hunter. The standard dachshund was bred to hunt badger, which are as big as they are, and the miniatures that we have now do rabbits. Dachshunds go underground by slithering, using their short, powerful front legs, pointed muzzles, and flexible spines to worm their way through burrows and root out their prey. Dachshund owners say that their fearless, strong-willed dogs are big dogs on little legs. The first thing that dachshund lovers learn is that the breed comes in two sizes, standard and miniature. Despite their different sizes, these two cousins were both bred to go to the ground, with the miniatures bred to combat a rapid rise in the rabbit population in Germany in the 1800s. All of the dachshund's power is up front. He's an aconderplastic dwarf so that he can fold down like those rulers that you see and go into the burrow. They dig, they enlarge it to get in if they have to. Dig with the front, push the dirt out with the rear, and they have a very punishing jaw with a long opening and enormous teeth for the size of the dog. And they just grab them and shake them. They're tough little dogs. Though the journalist H. L. Mencken famously said, a dachshund is a half dog high and a dog and a half long, doxies are really purpose built with their long rib cage enclosing a robust heart and lungs that make them star workers underground. The dog's lovable habit of tunneling under blankets is an indoor reminder of their outdoor heritage. In a living room or in a field, dachshunds love to dig. They came to this country before the turn of the century, not so much as hunting dogs, just as companions, although people instantly discovered that rabbits, squirrels, and errant cats would suddenly disappear from their neighborhood. They're very efficient. And the standard says that they are courageous to the point of rashness, which they are. They will take on absolutely anything, regardless of the size. German immigrants introduced dachshunds to the United States, and Minnesotan William Offer became one of the first Americans to breed, show, and exhibit dachshunds. The dogs became popular so quickly that the Dachshund Club of America was organized in 1895, and by 1914, dachshunds were among the 10 most popular entries in the Westminster Kennel Club show. World War I, however, changed things for the dachshund. Anti-German sentiment in the United States led to complicated feelings about the beloved breed. The AKC attempted to soften the hostility by changing the breed's name to Badger Dogs, but the number of dachshunds in the United States dwindled. But the dachshunds' glory days were not finished. After the war, American soldiers brought dachshunds home from Germany, 
and a few American breeders rebuilt the gene pool from German stock. Their dedication returned the dogs to show rings in the 1920s, beginning in the working group, then moving to the sporting group, before settling in the hound group in 1931. In fact, dachshunds are the only breed to win best in show competitions in all three groups. I think the dog is very much as it was originally, and we have tried very hard to keep it that way. It's basically a hunting dog. It also has a very stubborn streak to it, which makes it a challenge. You have to learn to get the dog interested in something. We do obedience with them. We do field trials, earth dog, barn hunt, almost anything. We call them one of the most versatile breeds in the country. In addition to the dachshund's distinct low profile, its enormous variety of coats and colors can make the breed appear like no other dogs or multiple breeds in the same body. There are so many combinations of looks that dachshund owners can joke that no two dogs are alike, from smooth, wire-haired and long-haired, to red, black, cream-colored, chocolate or gray, to dappled, striped and sable patterns, and almond-shaped eyes. The dachshund's unique shape and penetrating eyes have made the breed a darling of artists with two in particular expressing their affection for their dachshunds in some of their most famous works. Pablo Picasso's dachshund, Lump, bonded with the artist as a puppy and remained by Picasso's side at his villa in the south of France until they both passed away in 1973. The first day they met, Picasso painted Lump's portrait on a plate. The artist went on to feature Lump in more than 40 paintings. Though Picasso owned several dogs, it was only Lump who he would hold in his arms. David Hockney's beloved dachshunds, Stanley and Budgie, are the subjects of dozens of his paintings and drawings. In his book about the dogs, Hockney wrote, These two dear little creatures are my friends. They are intelligent, loving, comical, and often bored. They watch me work. I notice the warm shapes they make together, their sadnesses and their delights, and being Hollywood dogs, they somehow seem to know that a picture is being made. Other famous dachshund owners have included Andy Warhol, whose doxies Amos and Archie traveled everywhere with the artist and inspired a colorful portrait, Queen Victoria, Joan Crawford, Elizabeth Taylor, and Bridget Bardot. Okay. I got some good news. Dachshunds have been favored as comic characters by countless filmmakers, including the elongated Slinky Dog and Buster in the Toy Story movies. Okay, boy, to the curb! Yeah! No, Buster, no! And the charming Buddy in The Secret Life of Pets. And Dachshunds have been equally popular with children's book authors including the best-selling series Crusoe, the Celebrity Dachshund, which chronicles the travels and adventures of a real-life dog. Crusoe has also become an Instagram and Petsy star, with more than three million followers on social media hooked on the miniature black and tan dachshunds' videos and photos. Dachshunds have also inspired musicians. The Dach Song is sung at the Dachshund Festival in New York's Washington Square Park and has become an unofficial anthem for the breed. Its lyrics proclaim that only dachshunds are both short and long. There's no other dog like a dachshund Walking so close to the ground Now there's even a museum there's dedicated to doxies, which opened in 2018 in Germany. The Dachl Museum exhibits nearly 5,000 stamps, prints, and figurines, including mementos about Valdi, the dachshund symbol of the 1972 Munich Summer Olympics. The dachshund's instincts and ability have made them champions in field trials, but it may be their through-the-roof cuteness that has made the dogs favorites in homes across the country. They are consistently among the most popularly owned pets. They generally stay in the top 10. They're small, they're easy to keep in a house or an apartment. They don't need huge amounts of space to run in. They like to go out and run, and they dig, and they hunt, but they don't have to be in paddock-sized areas. With their noisy bark, dachshunds also make excellent watchdogs. In fact, dachshunds make a whole range of sounds 
from moans to funny noises that let their owners know what they want. Dachshunds love to talk. They make tremendous house dogs. They're good with people. They're wonderful with their own families. Anything that is your interest, obedience, being out in the field, staying home, confirmation, they can do it. They can do it all. In 1952, I saw a wire hair dachshund, and I said, that's it. That's what I want. And I've had wires ever since. <laughs>